Sons of Kemet, Black to the Future, album review, let's chat about it. Hey guys, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this latest one from Sons of Kemet. These guys are a UK-based jazz and Afrobeat troupe, and with their debut album, Burn, they caught me off guard, to be honest. This was a fiery, passionate blend of avant-garde jazz and world music and so much more. Honestly, I enjoyed this album overall, but some of the softer moments here were a little inconsistent to me. For my taste in modern jazz, I thought their follow-up album, Lest We Forget What We Came Here To Do, was all around just so much more consistent. It seemed to me just so urgent, so, so must listen. And that their 2018 album, Your Queen Is A Reptile, was even more urgent, which I didn't think was possible at the time. Also, just an awe-inspiring modern jazz album, one that's pretty awesome and gorgeous even in parts. But I have to be honest, the little singles leading up to this were very hit and miss with me. I really wanted to go into this just adoring everything about this album. Let's let's chat about it. Overall, this is a very, very above average jazz album. And Sons of Kemet continue to be just the band that we kind of need right now in jazz and Afrobeat more. We have Pick Up Your Burning Cross very early on in the album featuring Angel Bat Dawid and More Mother. And let me tell you, these are the types of tracks that Sons of Kemet should really be putting out right now. There is an urgency to this track that is just so commendable, like so much of their great material so far. It's wild, it's constantly shifting, it is everything that I crave in modern jazz music. Not to mention Angel Bat Dawid's and More Mother's contributions are both just stellar. I'm, I'm such a huge More Mother fan. Think of Home, on the other hand, is so much more inviting. It's so warm. Just a few minutes where you can kind of kick back and just take in the amount of talent these gentlemen have. It's pretty mesmerizing. Then we have For the Culture featuring D Double E. Once again, the name of the game is Urgency. You need to hear this right freaking now. Not only that, but it just it's a track that pulls from so many different genres, which is something I've always saluted in Sons of Kemet's catalog. There's also just this great synergy here between Sons of Kemet and DEE. It's fiery, it's exciting. When this album is on, it is on. And to never forget the source, I just absolutely love everything about this track all around. It's mysterious, but it's super warm. It's super inviting. Some of these tracks with no features, I mean, obviously the features kind of make this album, but some of these tracks with no features just really show Sons of Kemet even taking even more risks and branching out even more. It's not their most intense performance here, but it's cool for a myriad of other reasons. It's just so mesmerizing to hear. Uh, personally, though, this might just be me, but I expected a little bit more from this new album. We have Field featuring Joshua Iden, and I don't know, I just feel like this should have been so much more impactful. Now, let me just say this, Joshua's spoken word performance here is absolutely staggering. It is stunning, it is impactful, it is must listen. But as far as the instrumental goes, it's kind of sloppy, and I just know that Sons of Kemet can do so much better. I don't know, I feel like there's a disconnect here because this spoken word performance is just so fired up, and it is just awesome, and then we get this instrumental, it's just sort of average. I have a lot of the same feelings towards Hustle featuring Koji Radical. Once again, Koji Radical's performance on this track is hypnotizing in its own right. It is stellar. Sons of Kemet, though, kind of sound average at best. I don't know, it's these slower, more lopsided tunes that aren't really, you know, gripping me as much as I hope they would. And the final few tracks on this album are kind of hit and miss. Like, in remembrance of those fallen, fantastic track. This one hits hard right off the bat. There is nothing pensive. There is nothing slow moving about this track. This track is intense from the word go. And it is honestly right where I love hearing these guys. I love the upbeat nature to this track and how just anxious it sounds. It's constantly shifting. This sounds like it was recorded in one ridiculous take. And I would have loved to have been there to see that take. More than anything, this track just brings out the best in everyone. Everything about this track sounds stellar. And some of the solos all around are just jaw-dropping. Then we have Let the Circle Be Unbroken, and honestly, this track really doesn't shift me either way. I appreciate some of the rhythms, the woodwinds are super sharp, but the rest of this track is nothing new or wowing, it's kind of average. Envision Yourself Levitating, on the other hand, easily my favorite deep cut here. This track is fascinating. This is a mysterious jam that is fueled by nothing but 
mysticism and intrigue. This sounds like it should be soundtracking uh, a really particularly grisly scene in like an A24 horror movie. The patience here is commendable. The performances are fantastic. Everything about this works. It's over eight minutes long, but it doesn't get feel drawn out. It's just wowing. And Through the Madness, Stay Strong is just everything that I wanted to hear on this album. It's hypnotic. It has a great rhythm to it. This is the sound that I expected to hear for the majority of this album. And then Black, as a finale, kind of lets me down again for a different reason this time. Joshua's vocal performance, once again, is absolutely mesmerizing and must listen. But on the other hand, Sons of Kemet have a completely different idea for an instrumental, and it's pretty mesmerizing and must listen in its own right. Honestly, I feel like the two tracks that are going on here, the spoken word performance and the jazzy instrumental would be much better all around if there was a disconnect between the two, if they were two separate things. It's solid, it's fine, but I think it would be better if they were two different things. So, let me get this straight. Uh, honestly, this is a, still a must-listen jazz album, and it's easily one of the most must-listen albums of the year. As a matter of fact, Sons of Kemet are the band that we need right now in jazz and Afrobeat and jazz fusion. My only major criticism of this album is that there are a few tracks here where there is a disconnect between the spoken word portions and the jazzy instrumentals. I mean, both are must listen in their own right, but I feel like there is a slight disconnect here. Still, uh, th this is a fantastic jazz album overall. I mean, they're so fiery, they're so urgent. There's so much great stuff going on here. Definitely go out and check this out, even if I liked their last album a little bit better. I'm feeling a strong seven on this album, but let me know what you guys think down below. If you liked the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, guys.